What's up guys? Welcome back. Amazing RC. It's Brian here and as you can see, we're talking C34 this morning. Now, bring you from our last video, we chopped the chop off of our C34 here and we added a brand new driver and everything is looking great. However, I don't have a running truck, so looks may be deceiving. So I've decided this morning to get deep inside the hood of this beast and see if I can't get her a beating heartbeat. So what I did, seeing as how I can't really use these little WPL transmitters, I'm not saying they're bad, they're good for a stock car, but kind of partial to my RC6GS by Radiolink. I've got every other vehicle in here on this one transmitter and we're gonna do likewise with this C34. So, that leaves us with our first issue, which is getting all of that crammed underneath the hood. If you guys know, some of you C34 owners out there, they don't give you much in the uh, under the hood department. It's kind of like a Honda Civic under here, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And to get a full-size receiver in here, along with battery and everything else, well, that poses an issue. Here's what I did. There's a little piece of plastic, kind of a divider in here underneath the hood. I got rid of that first. That allowed me to get that tiny little chipset ESC that I keep buying from Banggood. I threw that in there, basically Velcroed it to the bottom of the engine pan here. And then as you can see, I've got my little R6FG receiver in here and I've got that velcroed to the back wall. So everything's in here nice and snug. I've got all of the wires wrapped up, zip tied down, and then I kind of took my antenna wire from my receiver and wove it in and out of those wires. I don't expect this truck's going to go very far from me, so reception isn't that high of a priority. So, got everything stuffed on this side of the vehicle. That gave me just enough room for my little battery here. One of the things I did to save some room is I got rid of the on-off switch that comes with the little chipset ESC. You got this little on-off switch here. Well, when you're starved for room, you know, getting rid of stuff like this kind of helps out. So what I did was basically I took the right and left wires to my on off switch and I soldered them together. Now what that does is when you turn on your transmitter basically as soon as you plug your battery in your truck's live. So it gets rid of our on off switch completely. So here's our battery. We're going to plug it in. As you can see we are live. Now I haven't hooked up all my lights yet so that's why my lights aren't on. I'm going to throw an on off switch in here somewhere so that I can you know manipulate my lights from the transmitter. If you guys know my channel, I'm all about doing that. This is home of the on-off switch. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to stuff all this in here, kind of cram it in. As you can see, nice and snug. Really snug when you can't get the hood down. The things that you got to look out for underneath this hood are these hinges. You got to make sure that nothing is in the way of these hinges. I'm telling you, there's no room under here. There we go. So, we've got our truck, it is now running, so we can take it out and play and have a great time. No, this is the real reason for this video. I need help from you guys out there. All of my WPL owners out there, I've got a question. It's actually a question I've asked numerous times before. I really thought I had things figured out, but I don't because I'm having a crunchy axle, crunchy drive shaft problem. If you guys notice, we're getting kind of a not smooth running here. And I have it kind of pinpointed to two places. It's either A, the axles themselves, which I, I really thought I had nice and silky smooth this time, or B, the way that these stock drive shafts are connected to this aftermarket motor and transmission and aftermarket axles. So it's got to be, I'm assuming, the really, really cheap stock drive shafts. Now, I've purchased drive shafts for these WPL trucks before, and I'm very apprehensive to doing so again. Because every time I buy drive shafts for these WPL trucks, they, they're they horrible. They either fall out or, and I don't care, I've, 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 you know, Loctite grub screws. I've done all kinds of work, and I still have horrible issues. Maybe it's Brian at Amazing RC. If any of you out there have had any issues with drive shafts, 
help me, tell me what I need to get so that I can get some good drive shafts, what has worked for you, and I swear I'll throw them in here, I'll get you guys a good plug, and we'll see if we can't get a good smooth operating C34. Now, I'm not dead in the water right now, I do have other axles, if you guys remember, we bought these really nice titanium axles, I just haven't installed them yet. Uh, so these are going to go in next, I really do think I'm going to have the exact same problem, because I'm telling you, it's in the drive shaft. I, I can see it binding up in the back. I'm going to take this back one out. I've had it used a few different times. I'm going to throw, I got another new stock drive shaft. I'm going to throw that in there in the other half of it across the room and see if I can get a better, you know, uh, working drive shaft. And we've swapped out a few parts in here. We still have a few parts to swap out. I've got to get new shocks in here. The stock shocks, you all know, are horrible. Uh, so I've got I've got shocks that have to go in. Um, uh, links, you know, I mean, links are links, but we'll get some nice links for this. Matter of fact, I think I may even have nice links for this already somewhere. Uh, but we made custom carbon fiber chassis for it. Uh, we've got the aftermarket uh, steering servo. The truck's on its way. I mean, it looks great. We've already, you know, accomplished the look. So we just got to get a good driving vehicle. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to take this half driving truck out somewhere and get a cool video with it because I'm jonesing for the C34. All my homies out there, you guys all know who you are with these C34s, man, and these awesome courses and all that, you guys got me Jones, and I got it like, this is like a, like a drug sitting on the counter. I gotta have it. Before I go, couple things real quick. Number one. Check this out. Bridge, huh? Huh? So we're gonna go over this real soon, how I made it. We're gonna get it, you know, kind of in working fashion. This obviously is for our SCX24 here. It's our little FPV car. So we're gonna definitely have this thing hiked out on something. Uh, super easy to make, cost me almost nothing. So uh, we got that coming. I had something else too. Oh, check this out. <laughs> Tuesday morning update. No, um, so on my, D12 here, I want a place to put a lot of electronics. I don't want to try to hide all crazy stuff in a tiny spot in this because we're going to put some really cool electronics in this. So, going to do a bed cover, right? Bed cover out of some canvas. But instead of doing it all crazy and crappy, this Gary sent to me a long time ago, a real good friend of mine. Uh, uh, he's got these little clips on it. I, I'm pretty sure they were stuck, but this is something he didn't use, but he sent it to me anyway. Well, I'm going to take these little tiny clips here because what they do is they allow you to hold like a rope or a rubber band of some kind. And I'm going to put these little clips exactly where they go on that. Bam, 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 bam. Dude, and do some ties across the canvas back and then hide all the goodies in there. Big girl, battery, all that stuff. So we've got plenty of stuff coming to you guys. I'm just trying to get it done. Film as quick as I possibly can. Look out for more stuff coming real soon. It's Brian, Amazing RC.